You wanna know the quickest way to kill a business? Just stop making sales and see what happens. You could have the best product ever, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna sell itself. So in this video, I'm gonna reveal all of my biggest secrets that I use to sell products and services. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan Pineda. I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur, and my goal is to help you start living the wealthy way. If you have no idea what that is, go to wealthyway.com and you can get access to our online course, our planner app, and our Discord community completely for free with no upsells. So these tips I'm about to reveal to you have made me millions of dollars. And I've realized along the way that no matter which business or industry I'm in, these tips are universal. They apply to everything. So tip number one is that you have to give value before you ever ask for anything in return. Most salespeople wanna just jump right into their sales pitch and tell you why their product is the best or why you should go with them. This is not adding value to your customer. Value is created by giving them something without them having to give you anything back in return. For example, the number one way that we get traffic to my businesses is by delivering social media content. I give a lot of value in these videos and I put a lot of time, money, and effort into creating them. But here's the thing, most people who watch my videos never buy anything from me. The reason I know this is last year in 2021, we got over 100 million views on social media across YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. So if I could have just made $1 per view, I would have made over $100 million last year. But I did not make that. And it just illustrates the point that the majority of people watching your content will not buy from you. And they're gonna get free value, which is completely fine. But there is going to be a small percentage that does purchase from you because of all the value you gave them. And that alone makes it all worth it. Now, social media may not be how you provide value. You could give value in a number of ways for your business. You could give potential clients a free book, a free guide, or a free consultation. An example of this would be at my company, Future Flipper. We'll get people who apply all the time to work with us, but they don't have any kind of money. Instead of saying, well, you can't work with us, there's nothing we can do about it, we instead give them some tools to go out there and try and make some money to potentially work with us down the road. One of these tools is we give them my book completely for free. They can go download it, they can get the PDF version. We also give them some real estate contracts. So at least we gave them some kind of value. And the truth is the majority of people we give the book to and the contracts to probably still don't even end up going with us. But the point is you wanna give people as much value as possible because it will end up coming back to you down the road. Now, once you provide value to people, it's now up to you on how you are going to sell. And that leads me to tip number two, which is learning to soft sell versus hard sell. Now, this tip has literally made me millions and how you go about it is gonna determine whether you're successful at selling or not. Now, you can have success with soft selling and hard selling. You just have to understand your strategy for which you wanna use them. So let's start off with hard selling. This is when you are going to really be putting the pressure on someone to purchase. Really, it's an all or nothing approach. You're basically trying to get them to buy right now at this very moment. You're gonna use tactics like scarcity, maybe saying that this promo code's gonna end right now, you better buy or the price is going up. You might use other scarcity tactics like you're only gonna take on a certain amount of people in this program or for this service. So if they want to sign up, they need to do it right this moment. This strategy can totally work after you've delivered value, but here's the thing, you cannot use it all the time. If you're constantly hard selling, then none of it is really true. You can't use these scarcity tactics if the promo code is always gonna be there the next day or you're always taking on new people. Also, if you're always doing hard sells, your audience is gonna get really tired of you really fast. So if you are gonna use this strategy, you need to make sure you are doing it when it counts. For example, in the social media space, I'll see some creators who never sell at all. They're constantly giving value, they're never selling at all, and then when it comes time for an event or a new product launch, or maybe they're doing a book or something, they'll say, hey guys, I know I never asked you for anything, but here's the deal, I need you to support me. Here's what we're selling, here's the event, here's the book, go buy 10 of them, go tell your friends, whatever the case is. This is an example of a hard sell, but because they never do it very often, it has tremendous impact because people cannot help but support them. If somebody has just given you so much value without ever asking you to buy anything in return, you can't help but support them when they do finally ask. This is the whole concept of Gary Vee's Jab, Jab, Right Hook book, 
where it's just constantly delivering value before you ever give the right hook. Now, this is a great strategy, but it's not the one that I personally use. Nor do I actually think it's the one that Gary Vee uses either. What I think Gary and I both use is soft selling. Now, with soft selling, you're never doing a hard pitch like I just said. You're just simply letting people know what you do and letting them know how to find you and do business with you. For example, in Gary Vee's content, he's always gonna mention one of his businesses. He could be talking about his wine company, maybe it's his V Friends NFT, maybe it's Vayner Media or Vayner Sports. And it's not that he's really trying to sell them, it's just that whatever content he's giving, one of those businesses or multiple businesses relate to what he's saying. And so it doesn't feel like he's pitching because it naturally just goes with what he's saying, but it is a soft sell at the end of the day. For me, it's no different. I'm usually making content about things that I'm doing in my business. That's why people watch me. And so if I'm touring a house with one of my students, Future Flipper is going to come up. In this video right now, I am soft selling because I can't help but mention my businesses and how I do it. Now here's the thing with soft selling. You can pretty much do it every single video. Because the content is related to whatever you're selling, it's not gonna seem like you're just doing this big old sales pitch. And the people that watch you are not gonna feel pressured to go use or buy your products or services. They just know that it comes along with the content. They're fine with it. Also, the way I look at it as a business owner, as a creator is twofold. For one, this might be the only time anyone ever sees a video of mine. They may have never watched any of my other content. They may never watch another one of my pieces of content again. So. If I have only one chance to talk to this person, I need to at least let them know what I do and how I can help them. And that leads me to the second part of this is if you have a product or a service that relates to the content you are giving, you are actually doing the audience a disservice if you do not tell them about it. Let's just say I make this video talking about this house I flipped and how much money I made. The person watching it is probably thinking, wow, I wish I could flip houses. How did he learn to do that? And if I don't ever tell them about my company or how we've helped thousands of students, I'm doing them a disservice because now, after watching the video, they're either not taking action or they're going down the rabbit hole trying to figure out how to do it and they're wasting time when I had the solution for them right then and there. So do not be afraid to tell people about your products and services. Just do it in a way that makes sense with the content. It's kind of funny because on my podcast, I had my good buddy Graham Stefan on, and it was a really good episode. But one of the commenters said, hey Ryan, you need to take lessons from Graham. He's not always selling stuff, and you're just too salesy, and this and that. And I said, dude, let me give you one piece of advice. The best salesperson is the one that you don't even know is selling you. Case in point, every time Graham tells you to hit the like button, or hit the subscribe button, or go get your two free stocks at Weeble, or whatever other affiliate there is, he is selling you. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's a cost to making content. He should get paid money for doing it. But the reality is, he's selling you. He's just doing it in a way that's a very, very soft sell. And it's more indirect because it's not one of his companies he owns versus somebody else who owns a company and very clearly is saying, buy stuff at my company. For whatever reason, people are a little more oblivious when you're promoting an affiliate because it's not your company, so it doesn't seem like you're selling your own stuff. But the reality is, when you ask somebody to subscribe and your main revenue stream is YouTube AdSense, that is you directly saying, buy my stuff, AKA get me more views, get more watch time because that's how I make money. And by the way, I'm just using Graham as an example because that actually happened on the podcast and with the comment. But nonetheless, this is every YouTube creator ever. They are all soft selling in some kind of way almost every single video. But anyways, that leads me to tip number three when it comes to selling, which is you need to understand the actual problem that you solve. So here's the reality. Most people try to sell a product to solve a problem that doesn't even really exist or is that important. So you need to first evaluate whether your product actually solves a need or not. But beyond that point, let's just say that you have a successful product. My guess is you don't know why clients actually buy that product. So what I would suggest you do is ask your clients for feedback on why they purchased. Since I'm on the topic of my company, Future Flipper, I've actually asked our students, why did you pick us? Why did you want to learn real estate investing from us when there are a whole bunch of other companies out there? The reason isn't to boost my ego, the reason is market research. I wanna know why they're picking us. Now in my mind, I thought they picked us because they just wanted to learn how to flip houses and they saw that I was successfully doing it and so, we should be pretty good at teaching them how to do the same thing. Pretty basic observation that makes sense. But when I ask them for feedback on what aspects made them choose and what aspects made them stay in the program, 
it was very different. For one, they said they loved the community aspect of it. They didn't have anyone in their circle or area that was trying to flip houses and invest in real estate. And so to get around like-minded people that were also pursuing the same goal was something that was really important to them. I said, okay, that makes a lot of sense. We should probably start talking about that more. The second thing that they said they really liked was the events. We hold events every quarter where I speak, where I bring in guest speakers, where I let our students speak. And essentially, they really love learning at those events, but they also love networking with each other and meeting each other in person and having a good time in Vegas. So the events and the community go hand in hand with what we're talking about. But another aspect was the accountability. Now, in our all-star program, we have accountability coaches that help them out. They check in with them weekly, make sure that they're staying on task. But there are other forms of accountability like our group Zoom calls, like our Facebook group. Even students within the program hold accountability groups with each other. And so hearing all that feedback made me realize that it's not about the X's and O's that we're necessarily teaching them on how to build their business. They're really in it for the community that Future Flipper brings. And it's good for me to know that this is one of our strengths compared to other companies. And it tells me that we need to promote the community more in our marketing, but also too, when our sales guys are pitching the product, they need to really let people know how important community is and why our community is so good. And my guess is for whatever your business is selling, whatever product or service you have, you may not know the truth beyond why people actually buy it. You probably think that you're giving them one thing when in reality, they're buying it because of a whole different reason. So if you wanna sell more of it, you need to know that reason and the problem that you're actually solving. But anyways, I hope this helps you guys sell a ton of products and services. Hope that it gave you a lot of value. If it did, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.